So in this video, we're going to take a look at how we process the bass. So in this mix, There's a lot of distortion on the bass, and it's because it helps it cut through. So that sounds like it's been completely obliterated. That actually has a little too much distortion for what I would do, but I would use almost just as much distortion. Uh, that one's compressing a little bit. The EQ that I do on the bass for this file, uh, this particular day, was I boosted a little bit of 1.4K, and I did this on the desk. For my instruments, I usually EQ on the desk and do dynamics in SoundGrid. I cut a little bit of 132, and I cut actually a little bit of 43. So with no EQ and no SoundGrid processing, this is what the bass sounds like off the stage. You can hear the, a little bit of the buzz from our LED lights. At least it's in the key of the song. There's the distortion pedal. As you can even see on this RTA, it's almost flat frequency response wise. Which is really great because it lets us hear it on smaller speakers. Here's with the EQ. Helps to get a little bit more definition. I'm doing the boost at 1.4K because it's a little extra compressed. Here's the 132 that we cut. It's just really woofy. Here, as I cut it, the sub low gets clearer. And I did cut some of this. That super ultra bottom end. Because I'm going to synthesize it later. Inside a sound grid, I'm running an SSL channel, and that is just doing a high pass filter at 20 hertz. And I use it for my input meter to make sure I'm hitting it right. And I'm also using the LA2A that Waves makes, the CLA2A. And that's just fattening it up just a little bit and doing maybe a dB of compression. See, it's not really doing anything. On his loudest hits, we'll see it move. There you go. So, just a little bit of movement on that compressor. And I don't, don't get any level out of that. It just gives a tonal shift where the low mids get really transient and really full. That's really nice. And then, just like the kick drum, I use R bass on bass. And this is what I'm using to synthesize that super low octave. Um, because a lot of times, you'll have bass players coming in with different basses, um, different makes, different models, and different quality. So sometimes you'll have a bass player that's playing a really nice bass and the low end of the pickups is really clear and it's really articulate. And some of the cheaper basses, they don't have a really defined low end. They don't have a really defined sub-region. So I usually tend to take that out and synthesize it so that I can have a consistent low end every time, which is what I like to do. So here is the bass with no R bass, and I'll add it in once we get to that kind of distorted section. R bass, R bass in. So here it totally sucked out all of the nasty tone and made it super low end heavy. Here's without it. There's it with it. The gain didn't change, but the size of the low end got way bigger. So that's how I process bass.